Uh, just give us your your take. You must have been watching the networks. You're watching the news break and reaction over there. What can you tell us? Well, look, this is this is a moment of of uh, a, a profoundly important political moment, both for the United States and potentially the world as well. Um, you know, this has been a good day for Kiev and a bad day for Moscow in the sense that, look, I think almost everybody knew, apart from the Bidens themselves until today, that it was over for Biden. We just had polls out this morning in the US, in Michigan, for example, showing him seven points behind. This is a state he won by narrowly in in, in 2020. Um, it was all over by the shouting. The Biden, All of the donors were pulling out. The, we knew that if Biden had stayed on, then you would have seen a succession of Democrats, senior Democrats calling for him to go. It would have been a slow, lingering death. So um, by this was, in a sense, there's a lot of talk in America right now about Biden being a great statesman and the ability of what he's done. And there's a sense to that. But in another sense, it is simply Biden recognizing reality. The truth is now is that the the uh, Democrats have given themselves a chance. This was an election that was almost certainly going to be lost to Trump with all of the consequences, both nationally and internationally therein. We don't know how this is going to go for the Democrats. Now, it could be really messy. It could be that the Democrat brand itself has been profoundly tarnished. But what it does do is give them a chance, albeit a potentially narrow one, to beat Trump in November, because what it will do, whether it's Harris or whether it's somebody else, it will allow them to do what they always wanted to do in the first place, but which had become impossible, i.e. make this election about Trump and his unfitness or alleged unfitness for office. While Biden was at the top of the ticket, that was impossible because every single question was about his unfitness for office, not Trump's. If it's Harris or someone else, they can at least attempt to turn the tables again and make this a referendum on Trump, which is what they always wanted to do in the first place. But Lewis, yes, I can see all that. And I think that the fact that it's happened changes the game. But before tonight's events, the odds were worse for the Democrats if Kamala Harris led them into the general election, even worse than they were if it had been Joe Biden. So how do you explain the the rejuvenescence of the Democrats under a potential uh, Kamala Harris leadership? Well, of course, we can't know that it's, it's, it's Harris for certain, although clearly I think she's going to have enjoy enormous institutional support from within the Democrat Party, and time is short. So it favours the vice president, whoever it is. 107 by, days, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And even, so, I mean, a matter of literally weeks until the Democrat convention in the middle of August in Chicago, where they have to choose someone by then, starts on August the 16th. So, Do you um, think she you know, has think, then the benefits of incumbency? She does, yeah, she does, in the sense that, um, that uh, look, she, she will be able to easily inherit all of the campaign money. She will be able to easily inherit all of the campaign infrastructure because she is already on, on, on the ticket. And she's just the natural person around, around whom to rally. It's going to be a brave alternative, whether it's a Gavin Newsom or a Gretchen Whitman or whoever happens to be. It's going to be a brave white person who is going to try and disrupt that inevitable, um, inevitable impulse the Democrats are going to have now. To go for, to rally for unity. I mean, you've got to remember, right? This has been a deeply bloody, deeply toxic period for the Democrats these last three weeks or month. They have yeah. been knocking seven bells out of each other. Yeah. This is a party which, up to now, has 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 prided itself, right, on being the sort of the coin a phrase we've become, we became familiar with in British politics, a strong and stable party, as opposed to the chaos of the Republicans. Right? This last few weeks, it has not been like that. So there's going to be a great impulse for that. But to answer your question, Rachel, about about Harris, I think there is a little bit of kind of misinformation about Harris, like. In terms of the polling on her, right, she, she doesn't poll brilliantly. She doesn't. But she has been polling better than Biden, actually, over the last few months. And it is very hard, as we know, for the vice president to emerge from the straitjacket of the vice presidency. It's not an easy job to, to have. You're always in the shadow of the person at the top. What the Democrats could have with, with Harris, and uh, you know, she, she has her, her flaws as a candidate, but what she has, she has youth. Suddenly, Trump is the old guy. They got, and she, yeah, course, she's yeah. a fluent performer. And also, of course, the Democrats will suddenly now have a tremendous Philip to their in terms of their enthusiasm. Right now, the, up to now, there has been a huge enthusiasm gap on the Democrat and Republican side versus the other, right? The Democrats have, have been down in the doldrums. The Republicans, as we saw in their convention in Milwaukee, tremendous enthusiasm for their candidate. The Democrats will love the prospect of not only electing the first female president, but the first female Africa, but the first female black president and first of Indian origin as well, right? That okay, could be. But if, Lewis, she can, if she can emerge from that, it, she could be a strong candidate. She, that's exactly what I was going to ask you. Of course, she she tick, ticks two big, unprecedented boxes. 
Mm. Not, not unprecedented in terms of color, but in, un, in, unprecedented in terms of being a woman of color, uh, yeah. taking a tilt for the top job. But Lewis Goodall, how good is she? Well, we're going to find out, aren't we? We're going to find out in terms of how she's going to look. I mean, she's she's had an accomplished career. She was a U.S. senator from California. She was an accomplished prosecutor in, in California. Where she's going to have now the biggest test of of her political life. And and the problem for the Democrats is this, right? That there are two potentially contradictory impulses at play here, right? Which is one of them I've already described, which is they want unity. They want to rally around someone. They're scared of what might happen given time is so short. If they don't, on the other hand, if they anoint Harris, if they seems to crown her give her a coronation then that there is an argument which says that it plays into trump's hands and the republicans hands right because they will argue as they're already doing this was all planned this was part of a great big effort by the party machine to give it to harris she's not no one's voted for her there was no competitive primary process etc 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 it feeds into that critique of party elites and political elites and washington elites that trump and his uh, people and vance make time and time again so there is a a trade-off now for the democrats to consider between having unity and having legitimacy. And it's interesting tonight that whilst you've seen people obviously like Biden or the Clintons very quick to endorse Harris, both Obama and Pelosi, who are the biggest power brokers there are in the Democrat Party, have not done so. And in fact, Obama in his statement, as I'm sure you, you said on the show, has talked about the importance of having a process to select a new candidate, a process implying that there would be something other than the Democrats just all collectively deciding it's going to be Harris. Fascinating. However, I mean, we've also seen Donald Trump basically saying, I mean, you say it was a kind of plot, but Donald Trump both seems angry about developments tonight. And we've seen a return to kind of nasty Trump. And he also mm. has said that Kamala Harris is easier to beat. So if mm. she's going to be easier to beat, why does he seem so angry? And why why is J.D. Vance being uh, echoing him in his rather ungracious sort of vindictive uh, mm. pronouncements they're making wouldn't it be wouldn't it be smarter to have welcomed tonight's developments because you know they are sitting pretty they have nothing to fear yeah, I mean, look, as we know, I think you know maybe a traditional political candidate would, as we know, Rachel, right? I mean, these aren't traditional political candidates, particularly Trump, right? So the uh, knives you know, are you know, always out, aren't they? They are. They are absolutely. Look, and 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 I think. Um, you know, I mean, there can be no doubt at all. Trump and Vance wanted to face Biden in, in November because exactly. they concluded that he was completely and utterly beatable and that there was no recovery from that catastrophic debate performance, which has to go down as one of the worst political decisions to have that debate when it was basically taken by any White House or, or virtually in American political history. But it is true to say as well, just on the on the Trump side, you know, when, when he's saying or when they're saying, the Republicans are saying, and this is one of is one of Harris's vulnerabilities, right? Is that there will be questions for Harris to answer and for the Democrats to answer. They will want to move on very quickly from the questions around Biden's, you know, cognitive decline and all that sort of stuff. But inevitably, the Republicans they're already doing this of trying to reframe it not about a crisis in confidence of the of just Biden himself, but of the Democrat Party more widely, suggesting there's been a conspiracy of silence, suggesting that this is, you know, they'll say this is the biggest sort of cover up since Watergate. And obviously, Harris, as the incumbent vice president, who has regular close contact with Biden, lots of questions for her will arise from it, right? When well, did they're you going to try and make a cognitive decline into a sort of scandal, a hidden yes. scandal? Well, and well, yeah, the, they the, knew, the but yeah. what did they know and when did they know it type of thing? Exactly right. Exactly oh, right. Yeah on well like, why would they do it. that after the event when he stepped aside well they're already trying to make it as sort of to say that actually that it's it's an ongoing question right so you've seen mike johnson the speaker of the house republican speaker of the house saying that if he's not capable of running then he shouldn't even be president now and i wouldn't be surprised if you know the republicans in the house try and start an inquiry into, into the whole thing and yeah of course we can say you know whether it's reasonable or, or, or not, but I think there are there are questions for the Democratic leadership to, to to answer. Right, the question all becomes how 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 ably or how successful will they be able to sort of pirouette onto the next question, and how quickly does the conversation quickly disappear and dissipate from these ones about Biden, which have, have dominated? Clearly, the fact that they're going to have to find a new nominee quickly is now going to be the centerpiece of American politics, and the big question is. Can the Democrats use this as a springboard? Can they use the momentum that this gives, the energy it gives them potentially, to actually look fresh 
and to be emboldened and to go on the offensive politically for the first time in weeks and months? Or are they destabilized by, is the brand damaged by everything that's happened? And can Trump find a new gear to continue on the aggression? That's the question that, you know, is going to be answered over the next few weeks. Lewis Goodall, I've got many, many more questions, but I've got to get back to my calls. Thank you so much for interrupting your holiday in Seattle.